Dear members and friends of Mount Calvary, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today is the fifth Sunday of Easter. It had also been designated in our country to be Mother's Day. It's a day when we celebrate the, the blessings of family and, and the gift of motherhood. It's a day to say thank you to God for our mothers and for all that they've done for us. May I encourage you especially in this time of social isolation and distancing to take the time to make contact with your loved ones. And maybe let's not forget also those other seniors out there who may be alone at this time. They could take your call as well. I'm sure that they would love it. After all, you have been blessed to be a blessing. And may God continue to bless you and, and to keep you strong during this difficult time. We begin again our worship this morning, this virtual worship, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in heart and mind in our prayer of confession, and then rejoice in the Savior's announcement of absolution. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The text for our meditation this morning is a continuation of our study of 1 Peter from the second chapter, verses 2 through 10. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. For you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious. You yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a, and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you might proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of our Lord. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And how blessed we really are. On this national celebration of Mother's Day, we think of the blessings of family, and we think of the, the gift of motherhood. Absent from one another because of the pandemic, perhaps we're even more aware of this blessing than at any other time. And we look forward to that time when we're going to be able to greet and even hug our loved ones again. So happy Mother's Day to all the mothers hearing. May God hasten the coming of that day. Christ is risen. As we continue to greet one another with these words, uh, we continue the celebration of the resurrection and, and the blessings given, including the blessing this morning, the blessing of identity. Who are you? You are whom God says you are. 
You are a chosen race, a, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a, a people for his own possession. That's who God says you are. Why? Well, because he purchased you. He purchased you to be his possession with the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to know it wasn't always that way. There was a time when you weren't his people. There was a time when he wasn't your God. A time when you did not receive mercy. But now, because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you are his people. You are a chosen race. You are a royal priesthood. You are a people belonging to God. And mercy? You now have mercy upon mercy upon mercy in Jesus Christ. Today, Peter, in our reading, calls Jesus a living stone, rejected by people and, and even rejected by the Father in heaven, too, as he, as he took upon himself our sin and died in our place. The very wrath of God was on him as he suffered and he died upon that cross. But he did not remain a dead stone. He's a living one. God the Father raised him from death on the first day of the week, and, and the stone that the builders had rejected now becomes the first laid stone. It becomes the cornerstone upon which God is going to build his Zion, his spiritual house, his holy church. And you are one of the living stones being built in, a stone being built up to be a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ, a house that is not built with brick or stone or wood and concrete and stucco like this building is, but of living stone people, a church community made up of holy priests, loving and caring for each other, all the time offering sacrifices acceptable to God. It's a beautiful picture that St. Peter paints for us. And how sad it is that life doesn't always fit the picture. You know how it is. In this world, it's not all beauty. Here we suffer suffering and experience suffering and pain and loss and hurt. And, and what about the other stones that are, being be, that are beside us that are also being built up into the spiritual house? Where are they? Well, sometimes they're just no help at all. In fact, sometimes it seems as though they're working harder in tearing us down than in building us up, hurting us rather than supporting us. And if we're really honest, we have to realize that sometimes we hit back too. They hurt us, we hurt them. They hit us with little stones, we threw bigger ones. Let's give the devil his due. He knows how to get our goat and other people's too as he seeks to tear down what Christ is building. It's important for us to acknowledge that, and it's important for us to confess it too. Amidst our being built up into the spiritual house, bad things happen, bad and unfair things, and, and it will continue to happen as, as long as we live in this world. The Christian church in this world is not perfect. It's forgiven. The devil is very much alive, seeking those that he might devour. But even that reality doesn't change God's word. His word is not a matter of what we see or what we feel or what we experience. It's not made true by things working out for us and not made true when things don't work out for us. We're not kingly priests because we look like kingly priests. We're not a chosen people because we always act like chosen people. Or when events chirp out our way, and we feel as if God is somehow loving us. You are who the Father says you are. You are worth what he paid for. It cost him his son. It's not a matter, matter of whether you measure up or not. This whole business really belongs to God. He says you're of value. He says you were worth tearing out a piece of his heart and giving you his son. Your identity, who you are, is found in him. Apart from him, you're just another dead rock. Tied to him, you're a living stone. You're a royal priesthood. His holiness has become your holiness. His kingliness, your kingliness. His mercy, a gift showered upon you together with every other spiritual blessing. Why? 
all so that you might proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's the reason we were created in the first place, to give glory to God in who we are and in all that we say and what we do. It's the reason why God continues to give us life in this world, so that we can tell his story. Yes, I love to tell the story, the story of God's grace and mercy and love for you and for the world in Jesus Christ. So this morning, let me encourage you. Don't trust your feelings. Don't believe what others say about you. Don't draw conclusions on who you are by what's happening around you. Trust his word. It's the final word on who you are and who you're going to be. And like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. My friends, taste that word daily. He is good. Trust that word daily. He is trustworthy. He is full of mercy. Remember, you are who the Father says you are. And that's who you're going to remain until that day when you see him face to face. And now may the peace of God that passes all our understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, your mercies to us are new every morning, and you bless us with every spiritual blessing and and every earthly blessing that is necessary for life. Trusting in your mercy, we come to you with our thoughts and petitions for our world, for our church, for our families, and for ourselves. We pray for your church and for all pastors and teachers of the church. May they always speak your words faithfully, and and may the Spirit use their words to sustain and to grow faith. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our church and for all in leadership in the countries around the globe. Give wisdom and the gift of leadership that peace may be sustained and that good government might prevail. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the sick, especially for those whom we name privately. Bring healing to those struggling with disease. Bless all those serving as doctors and nurses and other medical professionals. Give insight to the medical scientists that a vaccine may soon be discovered. Lord, in your mercy. We pray today for the blessings of family and on this Mother's Day, the gift of motherhood. Bless each mother in our listening audience. And give us a heart that responds in love and care. Lord, in your mercy. Grant, O Lord, during this time of pandemic, that we might grow and remain strong in faith, mindful that God even uses suffering for our good, for though it is, for, for that is for He promises us that it produces perseverance and perseverance character and, and character hope. And that living hope has been given to us in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Thank you for every blessing given. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.